Hey there, my name is James Lee. Welcome to 5149, my weekly video blog where I talk about business, politics, and society. So I've been making videos for over a year now and talking about politics kind of sucks. I see the media spewing propaganda all the time. Our leaders are talking out the butt all the time and people are trolling each other online all the time, trying to own the libs or own the cons. So I wanna take a second this week to revisit a Michael Brooks quote that really resonated with me. RIP, my man. But the quote is something to the effect of, be ruthless with systems, but be kind to people. And here's my interpretation of what he's saying, and it's kind of like the ethos of my channel. It's healthy to criticize the heck out of the system, but try and be understanding of individuals, because I think the less kind we are to people, the more ruthless the system becomes. Today, either by design or by accident, it's getting easier and easier to be ruthless with people, specifically people you don't know or don't identify with. There's social media algorithms that make it pretty easy to live in an online bubble. And then there's this geographic sorting where states, cities, and neighborhoods have increasingly become more segregated by partisanship, making it so that most of us are also living in a real life bubble. So odds are your friends, your neighbors, and anyone you interact with think more or less the same way you think. And if you literally don't know anyone who is quote unquote different than you, it becomes pretty easy to villainize them. Take the issue of the pandemic and vaccines. If you're on the side of vaccines or other public health measures like masking or social distancing, you're called a virtue signaler, a sheep, someone who is weak and under the control of government officials like Dr. Fauci or government agencies like the CDC, when in reality, for a lot of people in this country, it's been more than a year of not normal life. And some people's psychology has been deeply impacted by that. There's a little bit of anxiety about a return to normal, being around a bunch of people, which should be totally understandable. And on the flip side, if you're hesitant about vaccines, there's no shortage of people who are waiting in the wings to troll you, implying that you're stupid, uneducated, or incapable of logical thinking. And those people could be right. Maybe they aren't thinking logically, but we're not logical all the time, or at least I'm not. Anyway, what I'm saying is that people are so ready to eviscerate each other that they oftentimes don't even take the time to process what they're reacting to. So I posted this in my hometown Facebook group. Take a second to read it. Now read it again so we know we're on the same page. And let's rate our favorite responses. Facts. Not a lot of effort. Valid, valid point. Rick, he apologized when he realized, and I thought that was nice. Me. That clip was very funny, but it's also very, very bad. And what ends up happening is that people start hating each other more and more, people they don't even know, because who cares? And this dynamic has made the system just that much more ruthless. Like today, it's so easy for politicians and the media to weaponize this hate. They do it for viewers, they do it for money and power, and they do it for fame. Here's a concrete example. By the way, this isn't a personal endorsement of any of these guys, but in North Carolina, we have a Republican Senator, Richard Burr, who's actually sponsored a couple of good bills like the Bipartisan Student Loan Certainty Act, additional funding for K-12 schools, and more funding for the NIH. But in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis is busy signing an anti-riot bill that is aimed at cracking down on civil unrest with insane provisions that include civil immunity to people who drive through protesters blocking roads. The problem is nobody talks about Richard Burr, or at least I haven't heard too much. Instead, it's DeSantis, the person who weaponizes tribal politics, who is now somehow the top contender for president in 2024. This is not good. And what's perhaps worse is our leaders have injected partisanship into discussions around participation in democracy. According to a new Pew Research study, there's a stark contrast between how Democrats feel about voting access versus Republicans. For example, when asked about expanding early in-person voting, something in my view shouldn't be that controversial, 91% of Democrats were in favor as opposed to just 63% of Republicans. Like to me, everybody, regardless of which party you identify with, should want more people to participate in our elections. But people, based on the media they watch or the bubble they live in, are pre-wired to oppose each other's ideas, even if they're good ideas. You know, if there's something I've learned in the past few years paying attention to politics is that the system is designed to tear people apart. The system is literally creating two parallel universes that commingle less and less. Like the other day, somebody DM'd me asking why I follow this person on Twitter, some right-wing guy. 
And I'm glad this person took the time to ask before unfollowing me because I was able to explain that I sometimes will follow people who I disagree with. I don't think it's healthy to live in my own little universe because the more divided we are, the less compassionate we become and the easier it is for the system, the government to encroach on our real freedoms, like the freedom to work a job without getting told when it's okay or not okay to pee, or the freedom to live in something other than a state of perpetual war. The system is what we have to be most critical of, not the people. Uh, and I know there are gonna be bad faith people out there, might get burned a few times, but I'm not gonna participate in this. I'm just not going to do the division because I can't really change the system, at least not by myself, but I can control how I engage with people. So that's why this channel isn't about owning anyone, it's about owning the system, the corrupt system that we're all swimming in or, or drowning in, depending on how you wanna look at it. That's it for this week. Um, that's something that's been on my mind for a while, so thank you for listening. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, if you agree, please take a second to like this video, but more importantly, share it with people you know, people you don't know. That would really help us spread this message. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. My name is James Lee. Thank you for your time, and I will see you next week.